September 1st, 2023, the Minister of Parliamentary Affairs, Prahlad Joshi, made a surprise announcement about a five-day surprise session of Parliament on the 18th of September. It successfully surprised everyone and is making everyone wonder what is going on? What is going to happen? Oh my God, will Modi ji call for early elections? Oh, is he bringing in the uniform civil code? Will he show us how he built the new parliament with his bare hands? Did he bake all those bricks in a bhatti himself with his own hands? What is Modi ji going to do next? I wonder what is he going to do next? Yeah, that's happening. But let's go back in time. Indulge me for a little bit. August 31st, Prime Minister Modi asked people to share one sentence in Sanskrit on X, formerly known as Twitter. This is while new revelations on the whole Adani being shady and manipulating stocks to become ultra-rich, allegedly, have come out. BJP IT cell is busy trying to tell people how George Soros is attacking the, I mean, the country, George Soros. Bin. Yeah. August 30th, Modi ji shows up in a school in Delhi so that girls can tie a rakhi. One report reads, the customized rakhis which the girls tied on PM Modi's wrist had his image on them. I mean, sure, must be nice to have your own face on your wrist. I guess it's totally normal behavior. Oh yeah, and this is on the same day when the BJP official handle called him a... Terminator. Weird, but cool, I guess. August 29th, the government announced a subsidy of 200 rupees on gas cylinders. Ministers lined up to thank Adarnia Pradhan Mantri for doing this amazing thing and called it a gift for all the sisters on the occasion of Raksha Bandhan. Okay, going back more, August 23rd, Chandrayaan 3 made a successful landing on the moon and Modi ji did a split screen reaction video from South Africa while it was happening. And then of course, posters were put up thanking him for taking India to the moon. July 26th, Prime Minister Modi shows up at the ITPO convention center to inaugurate it by doing a havan and pretending to fly a drone. May 29th, 2023, PM Modi flags off Northeast's first Vande Bharat Express from Guwahati to New Jalpaiguri. Virtually. Yeah. April 3rd, Modi gives a speech at the CBI's Diamond Jubilee celebrations. He said, quote, People hold protests to demand CBI inquiry as CBI has emerged as a brand for truth and justice. Hmm. January 14th, 2023, Vande Bharat inauguration again. Okay, further back, November 14th, 2022, Modi leaves for a three-day visit to attend G20 summit in Bali. Tata bye-bye photos of him getting on the plane emerge. October 14th, 2022, Another Vande Bharat inauguration. January 15th, 2021. Announcement is made that Modi ji will flag off eight trains to boost connectivity to the Statue of Unity via video conferencing. This, all of this coverage is relentless. It's like Narendra Modi is everything, everywhere, all at once. You see, I can keep doing this. Google any date for the past 10 years and you will see some news items featuring the Prime Minister doing something and it being reported. Sometimes it gets dramatic as hell, like him sitting in a cave looking serene and all. Or it's mild stuff, like him visiting a bird sanctuary and the birds refusing to sit on his arm. और किसी तरह की कोई परेशानी नहीं हो रही है पक्षी को ऐसा लग रहा है कि बहुत जान पहचान है अगर हम अपने घर में किसी पक्षी को रखते हैं तो एक दोस्ती सी हो जाती है लेकिन माननीय प्रधानमंत्री के आने पर भी बहुत सहज सरल और एक बहुत ही मनमोहक दृश्य इस समय or really weird stuff like photos of him taking photos or him posing in front of photos of him taken in front of photos of him with his mother. 
One thing that is very evident about our current prime minister is that he is in the news all the time. He is in your face all the time. It is seen as an advantage by his party. Obviously, you step out on the streets and you'll see one poster or the other with his face on it. Visit websites on the internet and you'll see some ad with his face on it. Go to any petrol pump, there he is. Listen to radio, he's there too. Instagram reels, yeah, he's there. YouTube present, sir. In your dreams, of course he's there. Or wait, or maybe that's just me. Anyway, whether you like him or not, the propaganda machinery of the government has made sure that you will think about him, whether you like it or not. Maybe once a day, twice a day, or like me, 15 times a day. Simply put, Modi is the most successful brand in India today. There's no doubt about it. He is popular, he is ubiquitous, and he is kind of omnipresent. Everything, everywhere, all at once. But another big advantage of having someone like him as the Prime Minister is that his entire life for the past 10 years has been meticulously documented. Every public appearance, every utterance, every little thing he does is out there if you have the time and the patience to find it. No, seriously, go to Google, pick a date in the last 10 years and put in Narendra Modi with it. You will find something or the other that he is doing either on that very day or a day adjacent to it. You know, it's quite mind-blowing when you think about it, how much information about this man we already have. But then you also have to think, do we really? Do we? Or do we just have like a whole lot of information that his propaganda machinery wants us to have? Is all of this just a giant show that you are being made to watch day in and day out? And is any of it real? Or is it just well-crafted communication that we are being splattered with on a daily basis for the last 10 years? If all of this is just carefully crafted brand strategy, have you ever stopped to ask who is Modi? Who is the man behind this brand? And does his brand and its attributes really translate into what he's supposed to do? His job, which is governance? If you aren't asking these questions, you really should. And I'll give you some answers in this video today. Let's go. Hello there, I'm Meghnad, welcome to my channel. Today I'm starting a new series of long form unhinged deep dive videos with one singular objective, to document what the Modi government has done in the last 10 years. There's a reason why I read out all those events in the beginning. If you are someone who follows the news, is on Twitter or any other social media platform or even on WhatsApp, you will be blasted with what Modi is up to on a day-to-day -day basis. So much so that if you react to one thing today, tomorrow he and his government will do something else completely random, throw you off and force you to think about that thing too, which, is, which has Modi at the center of it just built in. Just like the five-day surprise session of parliament on the 18th of September, what is going to happen? Do you know? Do I know? No, we don't. It's sad that we are living in this time when we have no clue what surprising thing our government is going to spring on us that might just alter our lives in spectacular ways forever. But that's what the last 10 years have been like to be perfectly honest. Personally, ever since I moved to Delhi in 2011 and started working in and around parliament, I have been following the news. Since 2013 till date, Modi is just everywhere and you cannot but help notice him. I have been reacting to these, these things that I just told you for years now. Here's the thing though, 10 years in, I have had this big realization. In my eagerness and excitement to give hot takes about everything on a daily basis, you know, validation milta hai, I have not really looked at the big picture. And it's not just me, it's kind of everyone. I think this applies to you as well. So 
I have decided to do something about it. I'm making this series for two main reasons. First reason, I want to create a record of this government's performance and more specifically Narendra Modi. I know it's impossible to cover everything, but I'm going to try and do it till I can't do it anymore. <laughs> That's the plan. I'll give it to you slowly. I'll narrate it in simple, easy to follow ways, like a story. If you are watching this right now, my objective is to make you come back to this video a year later and for it to still make sense even one year later. Or, you know, show it to your kid a decade later when they ask, What happened to India when Modi government was in power? And then you can be like, Are, that's a very amazing long ass story. Wait, let me show you this amazing video series on Meg Nerd's channel. You know, he's just the best. Like, he's, he's amazing. Like, his storytelling, I tell you, it's not talented ladka hai na matlab kya hi batao tumko second reason i want to be extremely deliberate in this exercise keeping you in mind the viewer the people watching this video will fall into a few broad categories you are either someone who actively follows the news so you are more or less aware about what the modi government has been doing doesn't matter whether you support them or not but you are aware or you are someone who has avoided news for this very reason. It is an information overload and it is extremely toxic. So my second reason for doing this series is to create something for both of these audiences. I'm going to keep this light, easy to follow, fun, crazy, analytical, unhinged and even entertaining sometimes. And if you're wondering how many videos I plan to make in this series, honestly, I have no freaking idea. Yeah, this is a journey that I'm embarking on and honestly, I don't know where it will take me. And I want you to come with me on this journey. But holy shit balls, I have so many things to tell you, like so many things to tell you. And honestly, it's kind of nuts when I think about it, when I'm actually looking at the zoomed out picture right now. But yeah, we'll get there. Enjoy the first episode of this series, which I'm calling Modi Review. Is this a good title? So basic, but nice. You know, fits on a thumbnail. And it can be used in a conversation like, Hey, have you seen this new new episode of Modi Review on Meghnerd's channel? It's a cool man. He goes into so much detail. Huh. Okay, this should do until we come up with a nicer title. Today's episode focuses on the brand called Narendra Damodar Das Modi and what it represents. What is real and what isn't. Twenty sixth May, twenty fourteen was the day when BJP won the general elections with a majority mandate. BJP received 31% vote share, which translated into 282 seats in the Lok Sabha. That's 10 more than the halfway mark which you need to form government. It was also a big deal for the NDA alliance because they gained 166 seats in total compared to the last election. And the credit for all of this was squarely given to one man. Narendra Modi. I don't know if you remember, but I do. Back then, between the years of 2012 and 2014, the country was quite pissed off with the UPA government, especially the Congress. Modi was projected as the man from Gujarat who successfully implemented the Gujarat model and fixed shit in his state. So he will do the same for India now. His brand back then was of the development man or Vikas Purush. He was projected as someone who will transform India and bring about prosperity to the country because he knows how to get stuff done. Here's the thing though, this narrative went totally and completely against the conventional understanding we had of our democracy in recent memory. You see, people don't directly vote for the prime minister in the general elections. I mean, I have to say this, it's very obvious, but I have to say this. They vote to elect members of parliament in their constituencies. Once they win, if the party they represent gets a majority or cobbles up an alliance with other parties in the Lok Sabha and forms a majority, then they collectively decide amongst themselves who is going to be the prime minister. This is ideally what should happen according to our 
democratic system. But 2014 was different because right from the start, Modi was projected as a person who we are all voting for. Doesn't matter who your local MP is, just vote for the BJP and it's a vote for Modi. Which meant that there was this subtle understanding built up in all of our heads that this one man is going to tell everyone what to do and because the others don't really matter. The party, Bharatiya Janta Party, is incidental to Modi's existence. Modi is the BJP. The fact that BJP also won those elections is kind of a minor detail. It was Narendra Modi who won 2014 and it was constantly projected that way. Modi is BJP. And that thinking was carried forward in his style of functioning as well. Narendra Modi's style of governance can be best described as top down. He decides the others must follow. And everyone who won a seat in Lok Sabha knows that they exist only because of Modi, not the other way around. They show it as well. Look at this picture. What, what does it tell you? For me, it shows power that Modi holds over his colleagues. Oh wait, not colleagues, his subordinates. They line up to praise him and they mention him every chance they get. It's almost as if someone is keeping a watch on all BJP people to see whether they invoke Modi ji at least once when they speak publicly. Uh, okay, wait, let me show you. So, this is a random sample from Lok Sabha dated 15th September 2020. What you're seeing is the record of uncorrected debate. MP Girish Bhalchandra Bapat from Pune is speaking on the salary allowances and pension of MP's bill. Fifth sentence. We feel proud for Modi ji that he has declared a 20 lakh crore package and also announced many schemes. Sixth sentence. Modi ji knows it very well that we will need MP LED funds. 11th sentence, Modi ji and his government has taken a very good decision. We should trust government's decision. Okay, you want more? Take. Gopal ji Thakur from Darbhanga says, this is roughly translated, all of Mithila congratulates the country's successful Prime Minister, most respected Shri Narendra Bhai Modi ji for starting Vocal for Local, which is a step in the direction of Atmanirbhar Bharat. It sounds much more strange in Hindi because he calls him Desh ke Yashasvi Priya Mantri Param Adarniya Shri Narendra Bhai Modi ji. Yeah. But this is a channel which does English content, so we will stick to most respected Shri Narendra Bhai Modi ji. Thank you very much. Hashtag stop Hindi imposition. Okay, wait, this is fun. I'm literally just doing control F and putting Modi in Devanagari on this document, which covers just a single day of Lok Sabha proceedings, mind you. Here's one more. PP Chaudhary from Pali. Modi count one, two, three, Four. So, four mentions of Modi in a five-minute speech. Not bad, not bad, well done. Arjun Lal Mani, under the country's successful Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi ji's vision and leadership. Okay, yeah, there's a lot more there, but you get the point, right? And our BJP MPs are not the only people displaying this behavior, by the way. Even our TV news anchors have gotten into this habit of Modi, 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 Modi ji is the best, amazing, what a Modi, what an amazing, what an amazing he is. Every chance they get, every chance. Just look at these headlines, I mean, what the actual Modi winning world. One hug at a time. Yogi ne Modi se jo kaha, wo itihas badal dega. Janmashtami par Modi ne todi chin ki gardan. Dekhti rahi dunya. PM Modi shows India's power. Jo dunya me koi neta nahi kar paya, wo Modi ki ek chitthi ne kar dikhaya. Modi ne dikhai ungli, Biden ne turant pakda hath, aur fir, why Biden wants Modi's autograph. Sydney modified with PM Modi's presence. No leader like PM Modi. Arnab debates. All of this points towards how everyone who has a semblance of power in today's political arena have just offered it all up on a platter to Narendra Modi. They have decided to prostrate in front of him. The assumption is that the man can do no wrong and 
even if he does we will not tell him we will just not tell him only we shouldn't tell him because it will affect the larger brand a brand that everyone is now dependent on for winning elections and even thriving because of it you know like news anchors and the ads that they get and how they don't get censored by the government all of these people are thriving because of that brand so there is the brand narendra modi which is essentially a person who has all of these magnificent qualities that are attached to him and this man is using those qualities to govern the most populated country in the world what qualities you ask yeah that's that's what the video is about actually health warning first in this video we are going to go to all sorts of wonderful places like, you know we are going to run down different rabbit holes go in and then come out then suddenly go into another one and then revisit the one before you know that sort of thing what i mean is that this video might break your brain a little bit when you market a product you first need to define the qualities of that product and the target audience if it's a soap that is shaped like different animals and smells nice and is targeted at kids then the ads will harp on shapes and smell and also feature the kids if you want to sell a bottle of water and want to make it stand out you will sometimes try to zabardasti add attributes to it i mean it's filtered water okay aro ka pani maybe how different can it be right that's where marketing people come in and they are like our water comes from the pure streams of the himalayas yeah our water has 59% more oxygen than the regular water that you drink on a daily basis our water is filtered using the large hydron collider where we fuse two atoms together and create a stream of water out of thin air we to found arjun's arrow so we just shoot it on the ground and water comes out in a stream back then mahabharat times it was bhishma's mouth that was being filled uh, but today it is a plastic water bottle that is being filled genius yeah marketing folks have to work hard to make their product stand out it they really do and since our product and brand today is narendra modi let's try and figure out what sort of marketing pr attributes have been pushed on your face holes for the last 10 years narendra modi is a great orator he captures the crowd like never before no other leader has a command over a large gathering like he does this narrative has been sold to us like constantly look i do concede that modi has a pull whenever he gives speeches there is a massive crowd that gathers and he does take a lot of effort to keep their attention his speeches are littered with these clever sounding phrases and quotable quotes for instance take his latest independence day speech he started by calling everyone parivar jan i remember when he started giving speeches a decade ago it was mitro then at some point it changed to bhaiyon aur behno now it's parivar jan so earlier he was your friend then he became a sibling and then now he's projecting himself as a family member probably the head of the family the way things are going yeah like you can't challenge the head of the family now but the point i'm trying to make is that even a simple greeting in his speech is thought through oh and during election speeches he will do this neat little trick he will make a declarative statement like congress has looted the country for the past 70 years then he will turn towards the audience and ask didn't they do that the audience will go yes they did then he'll ask again didn't they do that and then they'll go like yes they did and then he will give a conclusion himself so we have to teach them a lesson or not and the audience will be like yes teach them a lesson goli maro sa and then he'll finally tell you what he really wants which is that's why you need to vote for bjp this time so that we can all teach them a lesson 
वोट फॉर बीजेपी वोट फॉर बीजेपी इट्स अ सिंपल एंड इफेक्टिव टेक्निक विच ही यूजेज अगेन एंड अगेन एंड अगेन इन ऑल ऑफ हिस स्पीचेस सो इज ई गुड एट गिविंग स्पीचेस येस नो डाउट अबाउट दैट but is it a virtue worth praising him and his brand for that's what we need to figure out you see speeches are by design a form of one way communication they are more like declarations being made to the people and modi ji does that a lot he gives speeches a lot and declares things also a lot he doesn't listen he says things and wants you to listen at all times this is a prime minister who hasn't done a press conference in 9 years because of precisely this reason press conferences would involve him listening to a question and then responding to it but modi's attribute is speaking not listening it's gotten so bizarre that even his phone conversations sound like speeches he called up the isro chief to congratulate him for the chandrayaan 3 landing and it literally sounded like he was giving a speech i can't show it to you because of copyright reasons but i will leave a link for you to watch below when he does interviews they are mostly scripted and fluffy questions like aap batwa rakhte hai kya aam kaise khate hai so much hua hai kitna kiya hai aur kya bacha hai modi ji bataiye humko you you know what i mean right all all those classics that you have seen being memed around what modi really indulges is carefully crafted communication with zero authenticity whatsoever whenever modi is caught off guard in unscripted moments he just comes off as extremely awkward and ill equipped चलिए पुडुचेरी को वणकम डोंट गेट मी रॉन्ग मोदी इज अ ग्रेट स्टोरी टेलर एंड ही डज हैव दिस इनेट एबिलिटी टू वीव वर्ड्स टुगेदर एंड मेक देम इंपैक्टफुल इट कैन विन हिम वोट्स बट डज दैट हेल्प विद गवर्नेंस just look at the very recent example of the 5 day special session of parliament which has been called the speculation is that they are going to announce a legislation to conduct a one nation one election it's speculation meaning the modi government wants elections for parliament state assemblies and local bodies to be held on the same day right now we have staggered elections general elections will happen next year in 2024 but if you live in rajasthan you will also vote in a state election this year what they want to do is to sync up all of these elections to happen simultaneously you know as an idea you might think yeah that makes sense you will be like yeah this this is great i will have to step out to vote only once in 5 years now it's it's easy it's very nice yeah yeah it sounds nice it sounds, sounds nice but it's not that simple to implement this all the current state assemblies and local bodies will have to be dissolved the votes that you gave to the current administrations will become pointless it is a huge overhaul to the federal democratic system and there are so many moving parts to it the research and information division of lok sabha secretary put out a summary of what would be the issues in conducting simultaneous election out of this i want you to specifically look at these two points number 1 consensus of all political parties on the issue would be required number 2 it is imperative that consensus of all state governments is also obtained consensus the reason why i'm giving you this example is because of this one word consensus what this government and especially modi is terrible at doing is building consensus ca protest and farmer protest were all a result of not building consensus before proposing a policy modi is great at monologues but terrible at dialogues he is great at telling stories and making declarative statements uh, he can win votes but that does not help with governance at all at all he is simply incapable of having a dialogue not because he can't but because he doesn't want to the thing is if everyone around you is constantly telling you how great of a speaker you are you might think that that is the only thing that you need to do man ki baat every sunday where you can just tell people
people what you think and it somehow gets done or people tell you it's done when it isn't actually done. Interviews will always be fluffy and one-sided. No press conference are required because hey, you don't need to convince anyone of anything. You will just speak and things will happen. There are many many examples of how this attribute that Modi displays and by extension his government displays has led to disastrous consequences. Demonetization is another example. He declared what he wanted without really thinking of the details or even talking to other people who are supposed to implement this hair-brained but gigantic scheme which sucks out all the money from our system. Not kidding, for real. Just look at this story. This is what happened before demonetization was announced on 8th of November. When the Prime Minister's office called ministers' offices to invite them for the cabinet meeting, they were told not to bring their mobile phones. The bank chiefs who will play a critical role in implementing the decision of sucking out currency denominations of 500 and 1000 rupees too had no information about the issue. This to me makes zero sense. His diktats are precisely like his speeches one-way communication. It's really simple for Modi. He does not engage in dialogue and prefers to keep people in the dark. Monologues are simple. You just prepare a word salad in your head, write it down and let it rip. Wait, is that what I'm doing? Is, is this what this is? Anyway, but dialogues can get messy. There are possibilities of disagreement and debate. Modi gives off this impression that he already has all the wisdom in the world that he needs. And so the dialogues and arguments are simply a waste of time. Speaking of simplicity, yeah, even that is sold to us as a brand attribute of this great brand Modi. What a simple guy he is, no? Like so simple, so simple. Like with, with like simple eating, simple living, what a simple ton only he is. Na Param Pujya Pradhan Sevak Adarniya Shri Sir Naren. Okay, uh, nice, that's done, hello, uh, yeah, mental health break guys, mental health break, uh, before we move on to chapter 3, wanted to give you some updates on this channel, about this channel, uh, this is the Make Nerd channel and I'm pretty sure a lot of you will discover this channel for the first time through this video, so hello, hi. Uh, we have memberships now. Yes, started 
about five days ago recording this uh yeah, we got a fair amount of good response uh, so the memberships uh, have two two tiers okay you can do basic support where you basically support me and uh, i will give priority to your comments on live streams and if you leave comments under the video i will give you priority uh, and the uh, second is super support where you will get access to members only live streams these will be somewhat of something like workshops uh, my thought was that i've spent a lot of time doing a lot of things um, which is research writing watching parliament doing news uh, making videos uh, editing hosting all the things so i thought i have all these skills and there might be people who want to learn those skills so if i can be of help of any way uh, i thought that it would be a nice thing to do these workshops so the workshops will also happen regularly so you can do super support and get access to those so yeah i am now moving into full time youtuber territory so i would really appreciate some support guys i mean if you can um and otherwise all good uh, just keep watching keep sharing uh, keep liking subscribing and all the things and uh, keep giving me suggestions on what the content is like and what you think about it so yeah now it is time for chapter 3 chapter 3 it is a very simple chapter about a very simple man In December 2016 Narendra Modi said something which is being quoted till date Jyada se jyada ye mera kya kar lenge bhai maine batai ye kya kar lenge Are hum to fakir aadmi hai jola leke chal padenge ji For the non Hindi speakers he said I am a poor man I will just pick up my meager belongings and move on He used the word fakir to describe himself It's actually an interesting term that derives from the Arabic word fakir with a q. It is used to describe a person who leads the life of simplicity, poverty and devotion to the spiritual path. When it comes to fakirs, there is a special emphasis given on detachment from material possessions and they are dependent on the kindness of the people for their sustenance. There are two concepts in Hinduism which I really need to mention here. One is bhiksha. It's the tradition of giving alms to a sadhu, sanyasi or monk who visits a devout Hindu household. You must be familiar, uh, Ravan had taken the form of a poor sanyasi, you know, a fakir. He went to the place where Sita was staying asking for bhiksha. Being the devout Hindu that Sita is, uh, she couldn't refuse and ended up getting kidnapped. The second concept is dakshina. It's simply an offering given to a guru, you know, guru dakshina. The guru himself is supposed to be a uh, fakir. The guru's job is to distribute knowledge and also guide people towards spiritual awakening and in return the students by their own free will give them guru dakshina if the student is a king they give land and gold and horses and goats and what not right it's a king they can just give whatever giant guru dakshinas if the student is a poor orphan then they'll maybe cook a meal for the guru or offer something meager but something as guru dakshina whatever they can so ask yourself this which one does our fakir admi modi take bhiksha or dakshina It's an open-ended question for you. I am not going to answer it. Uh, just leave an answer in the comments below. You see, Modi in a strange way is actually a fakir. I know his critics will bring up how he wore a suit with his name monogrammed on it when he met Obama. They'll bring up his expensive sunglasses and the luxury cars that he travels in, or even his super expensive eight thousand rupee airplane. We've all heard the jokes, guys. We have. Ha. Modi says he's a fakir. What about that giant luxury plane that it flies around in into all these foreign countries? Huh? Huh? What about that? Some fakir, मतलब कुछ भी. Did you see the clothes he wears? So fancy he is. Oh, and that camera he brings. वो lens पता है कितने का है? डेढ़ लाख का lens है वो. How fakir? What fakir? 
yeah just memes and jokes and what about it that's where it probably ends i don't want to do that though if reports are to be believed about how simple he is he owns none of those things the taxpayers are technically giving all of these things to him as a fakir narendra modi depends on the kindness of the people to give all of these things to him as bhiksha or guru dakshina depends on how you look at it in a very real way he hasn't exactly embraced the life of simplicity and poverty like a fakir aadmi is supposed to but his simple lifestyle is often seen as a virtue i found this fun fluffoganda article written in firstindia.co.in by shashikant sharma and shweta sharma it's about how modi is the epitome of selflessness and simplicity it says in 1996 and 1997 modi ji possessed an email account and would communicate over email i don't remember sending out emails even in 98 or couple of years down the line can we think of this modi ji had a nokia communicator at a time when we were struggling with those bulky mobile phones he owned that sleek device for communication used a laptop and had an exception professionally professional approach towards work ha huh. he owned a nokia communicator the sleek version of it was launched in 1998 and it was expensive the price back then was about 800 dollars add inflation to it it's 2023 that's Fifteen hundred dollars. So that's one lakh twenty four thousand two hundred and forty five rupees. So in nineteen ninety eight, when Narendra Modi wasn't in any government position back then, he was a general secretary for the Bharatiya Janata Party. So according to this article, which I don't know if we should trust at all, by the way, he owned an expensive as phone and a laptop before the taxpayer started giving him bhiksha. or guru dakshina again still don't know you tell hmm what is this behavior begnad everyone can see through your little engagement bait you can easily write a paragraph and give answers but no you want to sweet sweet comments from your viewers you vile psychopath stop playing with your audience like this what yaar you are supposed to be different as a content creator but no you just want to do what everybody does comment chodo na okay breakdowns aside let's not get too personal about narendra modi that's not my intention here at all but i do want to extend this simplicity virtue in another way in the direction of his way of thinking and of course governance Modi's outlook towards everything he does is based on this simplicity and most times it also enters the oversimplification territory. Government is not simple. Trust me, because human life is not simple. If a government has to make a policy on regulating the internet for example, they have to think through a lot of complicated things. In the last video about Ranveer Das Fluffoganda, I took a 15 second statement about data protection and spent three whole chapters trying to tell you about that and at the end of it even then i felt like i had barely scratched the surface after a point there is just no way to deal with issues in a simple way you can simplify your language make it more casual try and be funny all of that is good but you cannot escape complexities simple man modi does things simply though in fact there are instances where he actively avoids complicated things like a plague take a look at this on june 3rd 2014 right after narendra modi became prime minister he called the top bureaucrats to give 10 slide presentations in 10 minutes that's not all they formed groups the article says for instance finance is part of group a while secretaries of energy related departments are in group b and infrastructure is in group c so it's not like he'll focus on one secretary's department for those 10 minutes or something he called a group and spoke to them together yeah i mean think about it like a ministry can have like 10 schemes or maybe 20 schemes and modi ji just gave them 10 minutes to talk about it and give a slide show instead of spending i don't know a week on each department that's also possible but what the hell huh 
हमको क्या पता हम थोड़ी प्राइम मिनिस्टर है आई एम नॉट अ प्राइम मिनिस्टर वॉट डू आई नो and this behavior goes way back by the way during an interview with madhu kishwar back in 2014 he said this okay wait i i actually need to do a setup for this it it needs to be uh, it needs to have an effect Three or four days after I took office, the chief secretary came to me. He brought a heap of files this tall. They must have weighed fifteen to twenty kilos. The peon left them on my table. The chief secretary sat and said to me, "This is the file for Narmada. I can remember Narmada, but there were three other files also." The chief secretary said. These are on Gujarat's vital and sensitive issues. Take the time out to read them. You may need to speak on and take a position on at any time to address all these issues. I kept looking up and down the height of the stack 3 4 times. I said to him, "You leave these here and we shall meet in a few days." I did not even open these files. They stayed where they were. A voice came to me that I could not work through academic studies. The voice came from within. I said to the three officers who were working with me that the CS has given these to me. I will not be able to read so much. First, you people make me understand what masala the files contain. If I begin reading all this material, there is no end to it. It is not in my nature, prakruti. to read these files 3 or 4 days later the chief secretary returned i said to him tell me what the most important things are in these files he did so and i said this much is sufficient for me you can take the files back after that i have never had to be briefed on these issues and it's been 13 years since i had such ability that i was able to grasp the granularity of these issues such things left an impact on the officers i don't argue i am a good listener don't go by my reputation outside i listen a lot i can say today that if my development reading played a 30% role then listening had 70% role what i hear i analyze and classify the mal in different boxes in my mind this takes me no time and when needed i can retrieve it this extra method vidha i have been able to develop even today if my officers show me some paper i say tell me what's in this in 2 minutes for me 2 minutes is sufficient for a 10 page document this skill is something i have developed i have developed it okay i've developed it thank you akar patel for translating this very fascinating bit from the interview also a big thank you for writing this book yeah it has helped me with research for this video immensely and uh, you are the best okay so yeah thank you okay so you see what i mean modi talks proudly about how he approaches governance in a simple way it's like reading the cliff notes for a book and then telling everyone you have read the entire book or it's like reading the executive summary of the report and then telling everyone you read the report in great detail uh, you can pull this off at parties by the way you know by faffing your way through but this approach is just not good when you are making policy decisions that affect 1 0.4 billion people in fact i would argue that it can be dangerous right just to recap number 1 modi is that kind of a leader who believes in top down governance number 2 simple modi doesn't like complicated things and wants things in simple format and number 3 speaker modi doesn't like to have a conversation be challenged and wants to give speeches all the time and the result of all of this is a series of governance disasters we will cover those in other videos too of course but what also fascinating is how these disasters are also sold as a brand attribute and even a virtue as if modi brand is achieving something amazing by just causing one disaster after the another but it's not called a disaster it's called disruption master stroke 
डिसरप्शन प्लीज से हेलो टू डिसरप्टर मोदी लास्ट मंथ इन ऑगस्ट 2023 तमिलनाडु गवर्नर आर एन रवि प्रेज प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी फॉर क्रिएटिव डिसरप्शन ही स्पोक एट एन आई आई एम कॉन्क्लेव टाइटल्ड लीडरशिप इन द टाइम ऑफ डिसरप्शन ही सेड कोट प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी इज द ग्रेटेस्ट क्रिएटिव डिसरप्टर ऑफ मॉडर्न टाइम्स ऑल चेंजेस दैट वी सू टूडे एंड दैट हैव मेड द वर्ल्ड लुक टूवर्ड्स इंडिया फॉर सोल्यूशन इज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ द डिसरप्शन दैट ही ब्रॉट अबाउट द लेस वी से अबाउट आर एन रवि द बेटर बट आर एन रवि इज नॉट द फर्स्ट पर्सन टू कॉल मोदी और डिसरप्टर देर इज एन एंटायर बुक रिटर्न ऑन इट टू कॉल्ड नरेंद्र मोदी creative disruptor this book is written by rss man r bala shankar and has a foreword by amit shah i read a review of this book and it talks about how narendra modi came into challenge and unnerved the entrenched political establishment meaning the congress it says quote with modi's advent his determination to take on the system to dissolve and explode nexuses and syndicates to eradicate entitlements and cronyism they stared in a sense at the dismantling of their own empires of convenience again the congress you'll find many articles also which say that modi is a disruptor and how he changed the system from within and all the usual fluffy things again it's a brand attribute that is constantly evoked to define brand modi the word disruptor means a person or a thing that interrupts an event activity or process by causing a disturbance or problem this word is used more in tech where a new technology that comes into challenge and change old ones are said to be disruptions the people making these technologies are disruptors so is narendra modi a disruptor the answer to that depends on where you apply this word you see modi might be one person but he is playing different roles at any given point of time he is practically running a massive national political party he is the prime minister he is also a member of parliament from varanasi he is the star campaigner for the bjp and he also likes to think of himself and also project himself and the country i mean same thing i guess as a vishwa guru world leader motivational speaker that type of thing in all of this i would concede that modi did disrupt the existing political establishment in 2014 he did disrupt the national political party scene by helping propel the bjp to become the largest party in the country and also the richest but that is where the benefits of disruptions need to stop again it's important to know where you apply the word disruption in electoral politics can be a good thing it shakes up the existing political parties out of a slumber it gives us the voters new parties to root for and it also throws up some new leaders it's the churning that happens due to the disruptions that is a good kind of disruption and narendra modi did that wait did you just praise modi you did didn't you people will cut this out and say look Meghnath is a secret sanghi. Ha ha! I knew it. I knew it. Chaddi pant hai na? Wo tere pant ke niche, uski pant ke niche chaddi pant hai. And then you will get trolled by your fellow liberandos, and you will cry yourself to sleep again, screaming, "What have I done? What have I done? What have I?" So Narendra Modi did disrupt the existing political establishment, but when it comes to government, disruptions can be terrible. Just think about it. disruptions introduce an unpredictable element in the mix and turn things chaotic when chaos enters the picture you are unable to plan and think about the future that is a bad bad thing for the government government in its very very basic form is a service provider it is supposed to be boring it is supposed to function in the background and make citizen lives better that is their job If a government is stable, careful and boring, it can plan properly for a considerable period of time. Budgets can be allocated and projects can be implemented and completed. But if disruptions are introduced every other month, then everything goes for a toss. 
Modi brought in disruption in government and then everything went for a toss. Okay, okay, no, stop, stop it, stop it in her voice, stop it. I don't care about what people think. I need to get this out of my system. Like this entire thing, this 8,000 words I'm spewing out. Just let me get this out of my system. Shut up, shut up. Okay, now think of the three farm bills. An NRI businessman called Sharad Marathi, who has no experience in the sector, seeded the idea that agriculture needs to be corporatized in order to double farmer incomes. He proposed that farmers can lease out farmland to corporate style agribusinesses and they will effectively work as cogs in a machine. The government took this idea, ran with it and proposed three legislations that absolutely disrupted the entire sector. They removed the age-old middleman or Aarthi system, allowed big corporates to strike deals with farmers outside government control markets and a lot of more of these reforms. The problem with this whole thing was that A, they didn't bother to really talk to the farmers and take them into confidence and B, they wanted to bring a shock and awe sort of reform with the farm bills. Look, every sensible person in this country would agree that our agricultural sector needs reforms. So does our police and our education and healthcare. In fact, our government itself needs reforms. Nobody is arguing against that. But when it comes to large scale policy decisions, it is always best to do it in incremental ways. For example, if the idea is to start a new universal basic income scheme, where all citizens get a fixed amount of money every month from the government. To make this a policy, first, pilots need to be done across the board to see its effects. Then it needs to be incrementally implemented. Maybe first for the most vulnerable citizens, then senior citizens, then maybe women, and then everyone else. Something like that. And those would be done in phases with year-long gaps. Why? Because after every phase, an evaluation can be done to see what worked and what didn't. Just imagine them doing this with the farmer's bill. Do it in phases, try it out, make incremental changes, take feedback, then properly make the policy. That didn't happen, did it? Same thing with universal basic income. Were there leakages? Were there uncontrollable side effects? Did it really help to give free money to people? You need to constantly talk to the stakeholders, take them into confidence and let them tell you if the scheme has helped or it hasn't. Plus, it would also be great to keep a watch on the overall effects it has on our economy at large. Incremental gradual changes, not sudden ill thought out disruptions. But the Modi government is all about shock and awe. They don't think, they just do. Listen, our country, our India, our Bharat is chaotic as hell. Just look outside and you'll see a motley bunch of people with different worldviews getting along and living together and thriving as social animals. Or at least that is how it's supposed to be in an ideal situation. So if you add disruption within this chaotic country with all the chaos, everything goes absolutely donkey balls bonkers. I was just telling you that we need to get along and Baju me jagda kar rahe. Soundproofing karna padega. The disruptive chaos throws us all into a state where nothing makes sense. The government is supposed to be a counterbalance to this chaotic society that we live in, not aggravate our differences further and create more divisions by sowing more chaos. Look at it this way. There are two ways the government can function. Number one, they can be cautious, systematic, be careful when drafting policies, and they can make incremental changes. Or number two, they can be simplistic and do disruptive changes without much thought put into it and yeah, they, they can just go nuts. 
द फर्स्ट वन रिक्वायर्स डिसीजन टू बी डन बेस्ड ऑन सॉलिड ऑब्जेक्टिव एविडेंस एंड फैक्ट्स they first need to collect that evidence then analyze it and then use it to make the policies better incrementally the second doesn't need that because who cares simplicity doesn't need anything to be deeper or any facts for that matter it just needs the correct narratives to be sold to a target audience oh yes and the second type of government also needs to be decisive as hell and the modi government is decisive as hell even that is sold to us as a feature of brand modi we are told that it is a decisive competent authority is it though in the year 1949 george orwell wrote the science fiction dystopian novel 1984 I know I know what you guys are thinking are here we go again leftist intellectual invoking orwell 1984 in a video about modi ha huh? now he'll be like oh look everything is so orwellian and 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 you know he's a dictator and an authoritarian you guys are so predictable guys so predictable you librandos are well predictable or not i am going to do this anyway but there's a difference i'm not just going to assume that you read the book so let me quickly give you a synopsis of the 1984 novel it's story time uh by the way spoiler alert the ending is tragic as far it's the year 1984 The world is ensnared in the grip of a totalitarian regime. Every street corner, every home and all citizens are under the unblinking gaze of Big Brother. There are giant propaganda posters everywhere, constantly reminding everyone that Big Brother is everywhere. He is everything all at once. Big Brother is omnipresent and always always watching you there is this fellow called winston smith he is just a regular normal guy he works at the ministry of truth which works day and night to revise history and spread propaganda they are responsible for producing all public documentation literature news and entertainment in the super state of oceania winston helps big brother do all this in his own small way just a cog in the wheel whose main function is to manipulate the fabric of reality the party employs an insidious form of linguistic manipulation known as news speak it's a stripped down version of the english language and is designed to limit the range of thought words related to freedom rebellion and individualism are removed the remaining words are redefined to suit the party's ideology concepts that cannot be named are harder to think about slogans like war is peace freedom is slavery and ignorance is strength are repeated again and again to create this new reality citizens are compelled to accept contradictory beliefs further tightening the party's stranglehold on their minds and thus by controlling language the party also controls thought itself one day our normal guy winston sees a small rip in this fabric he starts having feelings of discontent against the regime within his head he starts asking questions and this is in a place where even thinking about such things is a crime it's a thought crime but winston secretly starts documenting his thoughts in a diary he starts remembering things from a time before big brother came into the picture before this party took over he starts to seek out other people who share those feelings winston also falls in love but in this world even your sexuality is controlled and it's illegal to have affairs he was in trouble winston starts being hunted by thought police for all his crimes against the regime he starts thinking of building a resistance movement a vast underground network of dissenters but this is dystopia and big brother is always watching the thought police capture winston and take him to the ministry of love this is a ministry where errant citizens are taught how to love the party and big brother 
by torturing them. Winston is subjected to intense psychological torture designed to break his spirit and loyalty to anything other than the party. The thought police tormentors meticulously erase all traces of rebellion from his mind. In the end, faced with his deepest fear in room 101, Winston crumbles. He loses the ability to resist. Winston becomes a reformed man who sincerely loves and adores Big Brother. Winston becomes one with the party and a model citizen of Oceania. The end. What a fun story, right? What? You thought that Winston will end up overthrowing the regime or you know, what What were you thinking? You guys are fools if you were thinking that. I mean, like Winston, you and I are just tiny ants doing like ant things, you know, like while the giant authority up top can, can just crush us in an instant. Like for example, this video, they can just look at it and they will like crush this ant. There is absolutely no hope, guys. No hope. I tell you, we are just all going to die. So you better obey the authority and just just be be obeying everything that they say. You, there is no... Okay, I think we need to calm down and stop spiraling all the time. Hmm? Deep breath. So, do you get the point of it or do I need to spell it out for you? Okay, I'm going to spell it out for you anyway. 1984 is one of the best books which gives us a glimpse of the authoritarian regime. In it, Big Brother is the brand that everything is centered around. We don't even know if it's a person or just a brand that is used to instill fear and control on the population. Real or not, Big Brother is a competent authority. The party which runs this regime is very efficient and is great at surveillance. They even came up with a new language which would let them control thoughts. They demand utter obedience from their citizens and no dissent is tolerated. In this fictional world, we have this very well-run top-down government which is just doing what it is supposed to do. Rule with an iron fist. For you and me, the powerless citizens, the ants, Orwell's 1984 is a warning. But for those in power, the authorities, the big brothers, those with authoritarian tendencies, this same book is describing a pleasant wet dream. <laughs> this book only partly applies to our scenario though. We have an authority, but it is not at all competent. It is an incompetent authority. They want to control the citizens, but they fail at it because, well, all of the reasons I just told you in the video. Not only is our pseudo big brother incompetent, but it's also incredibly decisive. I mean, this decisiveness is also just another attribute that is sold to us, which defines brand Modi, right? Modi government is a fast government. It takes fast decisions. It doesn't linger on anything for too long. It is very decisive. Modi does decisive master strokes and hits it out of the park all the time. Even when there is no ball, he will do this and something will go out of the park. What a master stroke. All that, all, all of all of that kind of crap. You know what I mean? You've heard it before and so have I. But think about it. When it's an incompetent government, incapable of holding dialogue, obsessed with oversimplification and frightfully disruptive for no reason, then that decisiveness is actually a very negative trait. In fact, it leads to certain disaster and chaos. You know what guys, I would genuinely prefer a boring, slow, deliberate government at this point. It will, sure, it will f*** things up. All governments do that, but at least the damage will be very limited. The decisions that this Modi government takes are meant to affect as many people as possible. The shock and awe needs to be huge. It needs to take over everybody's mind space. It needs to make people go, 
Oh my God, we didn't see that coming. Oh my God, Modi ji, what a master stroke. Thali bajao, thali bajao. Oh, oh yeah, oh, oh, what, what did you say? You, you, you are against my Modi ji? You are against my Modi ji? You, you, how dare you? How dare you? You know, you say whatever. Tum kuch bhi bolo, lekin aayega to Modi. Thank you so much for watching that video guys again as i said memberships are live plain and ct anyway thank you for watching this video memberships are live please membership kar lo i do live streams every wednesday at 9 pm please come for that as well and uh, i hope you enjoyed this i'm very excited about this series uh, next episode what will it be i don't know i don't know i don't know i haven't planned anything oh fun leave comments thank you for watching bye